today in the previous class we discussed about the investment decisions and the financing decisions now the project is decided the funds have been decided now the funds are invested into the project now what next the project will start yielding return on investment now once the profit start generating the manager will meet out all the commitment external commitments etc now the biggest responsibility on the shoulder of the manager finance manager what is that out of the residual profits how much should be distributed to the equity shareholders in the form of dividend and how much should be ploughed back in the form of retained earnings the top management will expect him to ploughed back more profits so that sufficient funds are available for expansion proposals of the company but the shareholders will expect more return on investment so he has to strike a balance between the preference of the shareholders and the expectations of the top level management it's a very sensitive and a very crucial decision to be taken ultimately he has to satisfy both the investors as well as the top level management so he will take into consideration certain factors what are the factors that he has to take into consideration about declaration of dividend and ploughing back of profits the number one is earnings of the company how much is the profit that the company has earned in a particular year if higher profits are earned company can as well declare more amount of dividend etc but please remember earning of the current year cannot be taken as a base that every year it will be the same fine so this year there is a good yield profits are good the situation is very good because of that more sales because of that more profit so because of that the company is able to declare more dividend but what is the guarantee that next year also the dividend the earnings will be the same so he has to take into consideration stability of earnings see the investor will be very disappointed if in particular year if higher dividends are given and the subsequent year either low dividend or no dividend by investor interest will be there so before considering the amount of dividend to be declared the manager has to ensure if there are stable earnings if the company's earnings are stable from last year to current year current year to subsequent year then the then he can consider declaring more amount of dividend because any time the funds are required he can as well manage because the profits are stable but if the earnings are not stable he has to be very cautious in taking a decision similarly stability of dividend stability of dividend now we can say that for borrowed capital it carries a fixed return on investment but companies very in a very general way they make even the dividend to be a particular rate a stable rate maybe it will vary by one or two percentages but to by and large they want to maintain a particular dividend so stability of dividends should be taken into consideration while deciding about the dividend to be declared the next one is cash flow position if the company's cash flow position is good the company can consider distributing dividend <coughs> can company can consider declaring cash dividend but if the company's cash position is not good even if the profits are good if cash flows are not good the company cannot declare more amount of cash dividend instead the company can plow back more amount of profits the next one is growth opportunities the companies which are in the growing stage they would want more funds for expansion proposals investment in new projects etc but some companies have come to a saturation that there is no further scope for expansion at all in that case that company may not require any ploughed back profit at all they might distribute every amount in the form of dividends the companies which have constant exposure expansion proposals would prefer to retain more money for future purposes and declare only less percentage dividend on the other hand the companies which have achieved the maturity stage which have attained the maturity stage that company will distribute every amount of profit in the point of form of dividends than ploughing back of profit the next one is preference of shareholders the composition of shareholders which a company has if majority of the shareholders are uh, monthly income earners or rather they expect dividend to be their main source of income 
they would prefer to have cash dividend. On the other hand, if the composition of investors constitute adventurous investors or the ones who are expecting capital maximization, capital appreciation, they would prefer plowing back of profits than cash dividend. So that factor should be taken into consideration. The next is taxation policy, capital gains tax, tax on the dividend income etc. So if the prevailing tax rates are high, the company can declare less dividend and plow back more amount of profit. If the tax rates are good, considerable, then the company can declare more amount of dividends. The next is stock market reaction. What is the state of capital market? If the company is expect, expecting an increase in the price of the shares, the company can declare cash dividend. So, therefore, the company's share prices will increase. Company can raise money whenever it wants in the form of equity shares. But the capital market is not satisfactory. Stock market is very volatile. The company can plow back more amount of profit because it cannot access to the capital market for raising money. So, that should be taken into consideration. So, stock market reaction and access to capital market. The next is legal constraints. Provisions of SEBI should be taken into consideration about declaration of dividend. SEBI guide, uh, gives guidelines from time to time about how much of dividend should be maintained, etc. So that should also be taken into consideration. The most important one is contractual constraints. If the capital structure of the company consists of more of borrowed capital and less of equity, the, the lenders will start imposing restrictions about the rate of dividend to be declared. So, the lender instructions also should be taken into consideration. Lender constraints also should be taken into consideration about how much to plow back and how much to distribute in the form of dividend. So, we discussed about what you mean by dividend decision. Dividend decision is a decision regarding the amount of dividend to be declared and the amount to be plowed back by the company for future purposes. It's a very sensitive and very very complex decision to be taken. While deciding about the amount of dividend to be declared, the, uh, the manager has to take into consideration the earnings of the company and the next the earnings of the company talks about the current income. But he also he has to take into consideration the stability of earnings. If the company's earnings are stable, then he can choose a decision of giving more amount of dividend because anytime he wants funds he can raise money. Stability of dividend, what percentage of profit should be maintained in the form of dividend. So how much will be spent and how much can be brought back should be decided. Then cash flow position, if the company's cash position is satisfactory, then the company can distribute dividends, cash dividends. On the other hand, if the cash flow position is not satisfactory, even if the profits are good, the company can plow back more amount of profits. Then, prefer growth opportunities, the companies which are in the economic cycle of going up, in the sense they are in the growth stage, yet to attain the maturity stage, these companies will require more funds for their expansion purposes. So, they may plow back more amount of profits and distribute only less amount in the form of dividend. On the other hand, the companies which have come to the stage of maturity where they don't foresee any big expansion proposals, they don't plow back much amount of profit or rather they don't plow back at all. They distribute every amount of profit that they have earned in the form of dividends to the equity shareholders. On the next one is the preference of the existing shareholders. If the shareholders consist of more of monthly income people, their preference will be to get a stable monthly income instead of capital appreciation. On the other hand, if they want capital appreciation, then the company can go for plowing back of more amount of profit. The next one is taxation policy, tax on the dividend income. If the prevailing capital gains and other taxes are high, then the company can plow back more amount of profit and declare only less dividend. But if the tax rates are comfortable, then the company can distribute more amount of cash dividend. <coughs> the next is stock market reaction. How do the stock market react when the company declares more amount of cash dividend or back more amount of profit will also be taken into consideration. 
that leads to access to capital market. What is the condition of the company in approaching the capital market for raising further funds? If the company has a quick, comfortable access to stock market, then the company can blow back less amount and distribute more amount of dividends. The next one is legal constraints, provisions of SEBI to be taken into consideration while declaring dividend. And the instructions, constraints, restrictions imposed by the lenders for the distribution of dividend should also be taken into consideration while deciding about the amount of dividend to be declared. So, we have discussed about all the three financial decisions. Now, the next club, next thing we are going to discuss is about financial planning, what is called as the blueprint of financial management, what is called as financial planning. So, we shall now discuss about what do you mean by financial planning. Now, we have come across what do you mean by planning earlier. So, planning is the one which bridges the gap between where we are and where we want to be. So, financial planning deals about the various decisions to be taken by the manager with regard to the finance required in the business. So, we call financial planning to be the blueprint of financial activities of the company. It is called as the blueprint. Why? It gives a detailed sketch of the total expense, expenses that are expected and the total revenues that can be generated by which the manager is able to take concrete decisions about the financial activities of the company. Now, there are two important objectives of financial planning, namely to ensure that funds are available for appropriate purposes at appropriate time. I have been repeatedly telling that the funds raised for fixed capital purposes should be used only for fixed capital expenses and the funds meant for working capital should be used only for working capital purposes that cannot be interchanged at all. So the manager has to ensure that funds are available for appropriate purposes but at the same time he has to ensure that funds are not raised unnecessarily. We know pretty well that finance is a very scarce resource that being the case and and that being the case, the manager should be very cautious in raising funds. And sometimes he may have to raise funds at a huge cost. So he has to very he has to be very clear as to how much of funds are required and how much will be put into use. Only that much which can which is going to be put into use and the minimum amount as ploughed back amount should be retained. He cannot have idle funds at all. Idle funds will lead to overcapitalization, a situation where the return on investment is much lower than the amount of capital that has been employed. So, he has to be very clear that only required funds are raised. Now, by effective financial planning, the manager is able to enjoy the following benefits. Number one, it helps in forecasting. By proper financial planning, the manager is able to ascertain almost accurately how much of inflows and how much of outflows of funds will be there for the future. So, accordingly, financing decisions can be taken. Then, to a very great extent, when proper financial planning is done, it reduces the business shocks and surprises. So, there will not be a situation where there is a cash crunch funds are not available at all or there will be a situation that the funds are available in plenty. Both will not happen if proper financial planning is done. Then proper financial planning facilitates coordination of activities different between different departments and different functions of management. There will be effective coordination. Then proper financial planning helps in linking the investment decision and financing so, they, they go hand in hand. Funds required are invested at the appropriate projects. Then, the next is when proper financial planning is done, it avoids duplication of efforts. So, there will be no wastage of resources at all. And when proper financial planning is done, it is, it is very helpful in comparison. 
while comparing the actual expenses with the projected expenses and standard performance with the actual performance. So, these, these are the reasons why proper financial planning is required. So, we discussed about what do you mean by financial planning. Financial planning is a systematic preparation or blueprint of the financial activities of an organization. Financial planning is very much essential so that any proper decision can be taken. While framing financial plans, the manager has to ensure that funds are available for appropriate purposes and funds are not raised unnecessarily. By effective financial planning, the manager is able to forecast the future financial expenses, financial activities of the organization. By and large, by proper financial planning, the, the manager is able to reduce the business shocks and surprises. By and large, managers with the proper financial planning facilitates coordination of all functions of management. Effective financial planning helps in making investment and financing decisions. Proper financial planning reduces wastage of efforts and wastage of money also. And a good financial plan helps in comparison work easier. Comparison between actual projected ex actual expenses and projected expenses. So this is fully about financial planning. In the next module, we shall be discussing about the factors determining capital structure. What do you mean by fixed capital and what do you mean by working capital? Thank you. Namaste. Oh.